Hey everyone, it's John, and today what we're going to do is a free network automation lab based on EVPN with Cumulus Linux, so let's do it. So about a week ago, on my LinkedIn page and on my Twitter page, I posted this lab about my EVPN VXLAN deployment. And it happened to be a pretty popular post, but I did get some comments from people wanting to know exactly how do you go about deploying this lab. So I decided how about I just demonstrate it on here and we can go through it together. So this is a free lab like I said but you're going to have to have three things up and ready to be able to do it. So the first thing we're going to need is a network emulator. What I'm using here is EVNG. Now I happen to have the professional edition but you can also use the community edition just fine. Now the second thing we're going to need is some type of terminal to be able to deploy our automation. So the way I do this is use WSL Windows Subsystem for Linux. Now I just want to point out that I use WSL1 not WSL2 the new version because the new version actually has Hyper-V requirements and it does cause conflicts i.e. with Hyper-V enabled I'm not going to be able to start my VMware and my VMware is where I run my EVNG topology so I stay away from WSL2 and stick with WSL1. Alternatively you could just use a VM something like VirtualBox or VMware to spin up a Ubuntu image and you can just use that as your automation center if you want so that's also an option. And the third thing we're going to need is a Cumulus image. Now you can actually download these images for free but you're going to have to create an account. So if you just search for Cumulus VX you're going to be able to find the link for Cumulus VX. This is the virtual image and like I say you're going to be able to download it but you will have to register. Now once you've got that image downloaded you can install it into your EVNG and in the interest of brevity I'm not going to go through that whole process, the way you can do that is just by searching Cumulus EVNG and if we click on this link here, the actual EVNG page is going to give you a full walkthrough on how to do that. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you have EVNG installed and set up as well as Cumulus Linux images. The next thing we're going to do is go to my actual GitHub repository for this lab. So if we just search for IPv0 GitHub, it's going to take you to my repository. So let's just click on this one here and then click on repositories. Now this is the lab we're going to be doing, EVPN VXLAN Cumulus. Okay, so this is the actual topology we're going to need. So if we click on this image here, now because I'm using EVNG Pro, I can make it look this really nice aesthetic way with all these fancy colors and stuff. But really that's just window dressing. All we need to do is to get six Cumulus devices. And what I'm also going to grab is a generic switch just to have my out of band management. So let's go back to our topology and do that then. Okay, so let's right click and add a node and we'll go to Cumulus VX. Now the number of nodes I want to add are six nodes. Now just to match the lab I'm going to change the icon but this part is really not necessary at all. Okay so we want to change the RAM to 1024 and the Ethernet so I'll just give it something like say 8 whatever. And lastly what we want to do is change the console from VNC to Telnet. And there we are so let me just space this out correctly. Okay so I'm going to add an out of band management switch. Let's grab another node then. Now you can use whatever you want but I'll just grab a Cisco switch. I'll just change the icon and just change the name to management maybe. Okay, 1024 for the RAM and 8 ports should be enough. So let's add this. Okay, so what I want to do is connect this switch to the ETH0 port of every single Cumulus device. On Cumulus, the ETH0 port is the management port and it's automatically within its own VRF. So let's attach these up to ETH0. Okay, so the switch is connected to the ETH0 port of every single Cumulus device. Now what we need to do is to connect each Cumulus device to each other as per the topology diagram. So if we go back and look at that image again, you can just follow this basically. We go switch port 1 to switch port 1, so on so forth. So the quick way to get this right is to go from left to right from Cumulus 1 down to the leaf layer. Pull this down here. Switch port 1 to switch port 1, and then switch port 2 to switch port 1, and then switch port 3 to switch port 1. Then we go the opposite way, we grab the second spine device, and we go from right to left. So that's 1 to switch port 2. Okay, so let's talk about the out of band management addresses. So my EVNG topology is 192.168.31.190. So because of this address, this is going to be the address range with which I'm going to manage these devices. I'm using the 192.168.31 slash 24. So this part here you're going to have to change and customize to your own environment. So no doubt your EVE IP address is going to be different. It might be something like 192.168.54.131. 
in which case you're going to be using the 192.168.54.0 slash 24 address range. Okay, so the way I can actually connect into these devices is by using the management cloud interface. So right click again and then I choose network and the network type is management cloud zero and I'll just connect this to my switch here. Okay, so if we click again on the image of our diagram, we can see that we have end devices connected to switch ports 4 and switch port 5. So let's connect them up then. So right click and we'll grab some nodes and we'll take a virtual PC and we'll have 8 of them. So let's connect these up. We'll make that switch port 4 and switch port 5. Okay, so the topology is all correctly connected up. Let's turn on those devices then, shall we? So we go more actions and then start all nodes. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is to go back to my GitHub repository. And what I'm going to do here is clone this repository. So click code and then highlight this and then copy it. Okay, so I'm going to my terminal. In this case, I'm on my WSL. But for you, this might be an Ubuntu virtual machine within VMware. So what I'm going to say is git clone and then paste in the address. And now I've cloned the repository. So what I'm going to do is cd into that repository. So cd evpn. Okay, so if I do an ls, but here's the thing, in your case, you're going to have to make some slight modification to the host files. Now the reason why is that the host files also contain the management interfaces. So remember, I'm working from the 192.168.31 range because of my EVNG topology, you're going to have to make this match for your own. So if we go into the host files directory, we're going to see a host variable for every single device, R1 right through to R6. So let's just look at R1 for example. So within this host variable file, this part here, you're going to have to modify to suit your own. I'm using 192.168.31.0 slash 24 and R1 is going to have the IP address .101 R2 is going to have the IP address .102 right through to R6 which will have .106. But these are just management IP addresses, you can make them to suit whatever your lab needs. Okay, so let's go back out. So what I'm going to do here is to create a virtual environment. So I'll say python3 m ven and then a dot for this directory. Okay, great. And I'm going to activate this by saying source bin activate. And now you can see we've actually activated this virtual environment. This gives us a clean environment to be able to do fresh installations. So what I'm going to first install is Ansible and I'm going to use pip to do that. Python 3 m pip install Ansible. Okay, so the Ansible version I'm using, if I just grep for Ansible, is 2.10.4. So if you're watching this in the future and the playbook breaks, then I can only apologise. It was written to be compatible with this version currently. Okay, the next thing we need to install is SSH pass. So sudo apt install SSH pass. I'm just typing my sudo password. And as you can see, I've already got that installed. Okay, so what we now need to do is to go to our Cumulus devices and set up our connectivity. So let's go to device number one then. Okay, so for Cumulus, the default user is going to be Cumulus all lowercase and the password is Cumulus Linux with an exclamation mark. Okay, so the management IP address that I'm going to use for this device is going to be 192.168.31.101/24. Very likely you're going to be using different values. So I'll do a net add interface eth0 IP address 192.168.31.101/24. And to make the changes have effect, we need to commit those changes. So we'll say net commit. And that's it. That's all we need to do. Let's just repeat this process for each device. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my Windows subsystem for Linux. Okay, so now that I've actually configured the IP addresses on each device, then I should be able to reach them from my terminal. So let's ping this. So we'll ping device number one, and we have reachability, two, reachability. And similarly, I should be able to log in via SSH. So I'll do SSH Cumulus at the IP address, and we'll do 101, and the password is Cumulus Linux with the exclamation mark, like I said. Okay, great, so we can now get into the device. Let's exit back out this. So if we do an LS and we go into the inventory, you can see that within the repository, I've just specified the device names R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, and R6. So if I try to ping R1 right now, what's going to happen is the device is going to attempt a lookup and it's going to fail and find no IP address. So we need to fix that. So we'll say sudo vim, and we'll go into Etsy and then hosts. This will give us a temporary DNS entry. So the management IP is 192.168.101 for R1, and we'll just continue this through to all devices. Now if I ping R1, 
you can see that it's correctly resolving R1 to the IP address. So now that we have our management interface configured, all that's left to do is to deploy the script. And the script is going to build a full EVPN VXLAN deployment over BGP Unnumbered. Now I'm not going to go into BGP Unnumbered in too much depth, but basically it's this super cool feature which allows you to be able to deploy BGP IPv4 addresses over IPv6. In essence, all I need to do is specify the loopback addresses of each device. And all the peerings, all the next hop addresses are going to be IPv6 link local addresses. Furthermore, with BGP unnumbered, you don't actually have to manually specify your neighbour. Even better yet, you also don't need to specify your neighbour's autonomous system number. So if R3 wants to peer with R1, all I need to do from R3's perspective is say make a peering over switch port 1, and it's going to be an external BGP peer. I don't know what its AS is, I don't care, all I know is it's got a different AS from me, so we want to have an eBGP peering. So it's so, so good for automation because it allows us to be able to make very generic templates which apply to pretty much all devices in the same way. So with that preamble, let's execute the script and configure the network. So to configure this, I'm just going to say Ansible Playbook, and the playbook is called playbook.yaml. And because I need to elevate to root privileges, what I'm going to say is ask become pass. This is going to prompt me for the become password, i.e. the pseudo password, which in the case of Cumulus is still just Cumulus Linux exclamation mark. So let's type that in, Cumulus Linux exclamation mark. And there we have it, the network has been fully automated and we now have an EVPN VXLAN deployment over BGP unnumbered. So let's go to the devices and verify this. So if I go to device here and do a net show BGP summary. So this device has appearing over switch port 1, 2, 3, 4 and over its switch port 1 connection it's connected to an AS of 65002. On its switch port 2, it's also 65002, but switch ports 3 and 4 are 65003. Now that actually matches what you see on the diagram. So over switch port 1, we're connected to 65002, switch port 2, 65002, but switch port 3 and switch port 4, it's 65003. And if we also grab another device, we'll do net show root IPv4. We see all the BGP loopbacks we've actually learned. And notice what their next hops are. Their next hops are actually IPv6 link local addresses. Super cool. So if we rerun this script yet again, Ansible should detect that there's been no changes made to the host variable files, therefore no changes on the configurations are needed, thus it's going to be an item ported configuration. So as you can see, Ansible didn't attempt to make any changes at all, but if we wanted to change some values, we could go into our host files and maybe go into R1 and we'll change the spine AS to maybe be 6555. And we'll also do that to R2. So if we rerun the script, we should see changes on R1 and R2's BGP configuration. So Ansible should detect changes here for R1 and R2, and it does. So therefore, it's going to reload the handler for them. And now if we go to maybe say R3, it should now be peering to a different BGP AS. It's now peering with 65555. We'll do a net show BGP neighbor and grep for the states. And we've been established with this new AS for 51 seconds now. But because this is a VXLAN lab, let's test out our layer 2 connectivity across the layer 3 fabric. So if we look at the graphic, switch port 4 is in VLAN 1, which is associated with VNI 100 100, which also shares the same VNI, the same VLAN effectively, with switch port 5 on device number 6. So let's go to switch port 4 on device 3, and we'll just give it, I don't know, 66, 66, 66, 1, slash 24. And then we'll go to switch port 5 on device 6, 66, 66, 66, 2. And now let's see if we have connectivity over this L3 fabric. So ping 66, 66, 2, which is its own IP address, which is fine. And let's try and ping across the network to device number 3 by doing 66.1. And there we have it, full connectivity across the layer 3 fabric using EVPN VXLAN with BGP unnumbered. So hopefully you found this lab useful, I know some people had a little bit of issues getting it up and running, and if you have any further questions then just leave some comments in the comments section. Okie doke, so keep labbing, keep practicing, thanks very much, and I'll see you soon.